The cure for diabetes overwhelm and for setting up blood sugars to be as close to autopilot as possible are both going to be understanding and clarity. In today's breakdown, I want to share with you an epiphany that I had recently on not only how to achieve understanding and clarity, the two paths that you might choose between, but also how you can start making progress today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist living with type 1 diabetes. My goal for you today is to know exactly how to get to that level of deeper understanding and clarity so that you can avoid overwhelm, but also set up your diabetes for cruise control. Let's get into our theme song, and then I got a story for you. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. Very recently, I had some blood sugars that were less than ideal. Uh, see, I had an arrow up on my CGM, which if you don't know what that means, basically my blood sugars were spiking through the roof and it did not look good. But I was completely at peace and I was like singing and just like going about my day like, yeah, you know what? It's going to be fine. We'll turn this thing around eventually. And I was happy. And that doesn't usually happen when I have blood sugars that are going to go high, right? Uh, usually I get angry and frustrated. And so I thought about it and I was like, why is that different? Why was I literally singing and just like cool with it? And the reason is because I had certainty about what happened. Like I knew what went wrong and I expected that behavior behind my blood sugars. Uh, see, I had a snack that I didn't dose for and my blood sugars responded in kind. And as a result, I was completely at peace. And I was like, oh, yep, my bad. You know, should I have done that? Probably not, <laughs> but I did it and it's gonna be fine. If on the other hand, my blood sugars spike for no reason, or seemingly no reason, right? I tell you guys that every blood sugar has a reason, but when I don't know what the reason is, I get mad. Like, and I don't know if anybody else experiences this. Let me know in the comments if you're with me on YouTube. If you've ever had blood sugars that don't cooperate and they spike or they drop or just act weird, I get angry about it where I'm like, oh my gosh, why the heck are they high right now, right? If I don't know, I've realized it's the uncertainty or the lack of information that drives me insane. And maybe I'm just more of a type A kind of person and I need to know everything is under control. I don't know. But I'm also racking my brain when those things do go out of control. Like if I have the same situation that I experienced, but maybe I didn't know why, right? My brain's going, okay, is the insulin bad and I have to change my insulin? Is the insulin pump site bad and I have to change my site? Uh, did the, the carb count not come through accurately? Did I miscount something? And I'm trying to problem solve. And if I can't put my finger on what went wrong, it drives me a little bit crazy. Does that happen to you at all? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Uh, maybe I'm the only crazy person that gets upset when things don't make sense with diabetes. But that was one of the big drivers many years ago for me when I wanted to take care of my blood sugars and get a, a deeper understanding of what was going on. In fact, a story that comes to mind with this is that many, many years ago, goodness, at this point, it's decades. Like there's an S on the end of it decades, more than one decade. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, but my uncle and my cousin were teaching me how to drive, uh, but well before I should have been driving, right? And my uncle owns this massive property out in the middle of uh, the mountains. And so he's like, hop in my truck. I'm going to teach you how to drive a stick shift today. And we were on a family vacation. And I'm like, Awesome, this sounds fantastic. And uh, it was a lot harder than I had anticipated, especially because I was learning how to drive but also how to drive a stick shift, but also how to drive a stick shift through mountains where there's trees and riverbeds and rocks and cliffs, <laughs> things you don't want to, uh, to hit or encounter. So it was a very difficult time, but he was there every step of the way, an excellent teacher, 
teaching me what things are, are important to look out for, uh, which things are important for me to not hit, right? How to shift gears properly. And what I've realized looking back on that as an example is that driving and learning to drive is kind of similar to diabetes in that if you drive by yourself and you've never driven before, it's very overwhelming, right? When I was first diagnosed with diabetes, immense overwhelm. So much so that I kind of just set it aside and I was like, maybe I'll take care of that later. I don't want to even think about it right now. But driving, you know, when you first get into a car, there's so many different things we have to consider. Again, just like diabetes and blood sugars, you know, you've got uh, three different mirrors you have to check. You've got the windshield you're looking through, the windows on the side to observe everything outside of the car. Make sure you're not in danger or gonna hit a tree or drive off a cliff or hit a pedestrian. You know, all these things going on in the outside world but then on the inside, it gets even crazier. Where you've got this dashboard with blinking lights and things flashing at you and warnings, right? You've got the radio to consider. If there's loud music playing, that's distracting. You've got air conditioning and heating and all these different knobs you have to figure out. Oh, but then driving the car itself, right? How to shift gears, <laughs> which gear is important for that specific situation. It is crazy overwhelming. So when looking at all of that in the context of figuring it out yourself, like most of us are kind of left to do with diabetes, uh, you know, we're given the bare minimum, like this is a car, gas means go, brake means stop, and with insulin and carbs, we're given our insulin to carb ratio. Insulin brings blood sugars down, carbs bring blood sugars up. Good luck, right? But then we're out left to fend for ourselves. And with a car, given enough time, through trial and error, you'd probably figure out how to make it work, right? You know, you, you put it in first and oh, it goes forward. It's lurching, but it's going forward. Uh, if I see a, a pedestrian, I hit the brakes, not the gas, right? And through trial and error, you'd probably eventually figure out how to drive good enough. You, know, you wouldn't be a, a race car driver, but you'd figure it out, right? Now with diabetes, similarly, when we're left to our own devices, we tend to figure things out and given enough time through trial and error and excellent observation and documentation, I might add, we would eventually figure it out good enough, right? I take insulin, oh, blood sugars went low. Insulin is bad. Oh, but wait, if I don't take insulin for a, a longer period of time, blood sugars go sky high. I end up in the hospital. Okay, so maybe I do need insulin, but maybe it's a specific amount somewhere in the middle. And over time, you, oh, maybe insulin is for carbs. And, you know, you'd probably figure it out over time through trial and error. But just like with driving, there are dangers associated with trial and error and you know driving operating a machine but diabetes you are literally playing with your life every time with this trial and error so it's a, a complicated thing but given enough time with trial and error excellent observation and proper documentation in other words writing down everything that you did or did not do and then the outcome of that with your blood sugars you'd probably figure it out, right? And for many years, that's what I had to do. Uh, and I obsessed over it. I spent years researching every possible outcome with blood sugars, what makes them go up, what makes them go down, writing down my own experiences as I went through that trial and error period. It's a little bit maddening and it was overwhelming, right? And that's why today's episode, I wanted to address that. Diabetes is overwhelming especially type one, there's a lot going on. There are over 50 plus variables that impact blood sugars. And if you're not aware of them, they can catch you off guard, right? Another driving example for you. Uh, there was a period of my life where I didn't know that there were emergency brakes other than the one right next to the gearbox, uh, that some cars have emergency brakes out down by the pedals. And I drove <laughs> my friend's car, I feel bad about this. I've actually never told him. I drove my friend's car all the way around the block with the emergency brake on because I didn't know his car had an emergency brake, right? Because I was completely unaware of it. With diabetes, you might be causing yourself extra harm or extra difficulty 
just because you're not aware of something. We call this your blind spots, right? And ignorance leads into blind spots. It can be incredibly dangerous. So you need to expand your mind and understand more of what's going on so you can reduce the blind spots and learn the lessons that need to be learned so that you can get closer to living with your diabetes on cruise control. But let's talk about cruise control for just a second, right? So with cars, that's kind of like one of the goals to get to, right? To be able to put a car into cruise control on the freeway and just hold your hand on the steering wheel and then you get to your destination. How nice was that? Peaceful, right? Because you have the ability to sit back and relax and just apply minimum effort, right? It's not no effort, it's not autopilot, but it's minimal effort to get to your destination. You can kind of have conversations and listen to the radio and whatnot. Now, with cruise control, the unfortunate reality is that you can't just jump to cruise control the first time you learn how to drive right? Because there's a lot of other things that come into play, like the laws of the road and how to change lanes, what to look for when you change lanes, um, how to operate the car if cruise control is no longer an option, if you have to slam on the brakes because there's a deer that's crossing the road, right? Whatever it is, you can't just jump into cruise control. And with diabetes, believe it or not, there is a cruise control you can pursue. We'll get to that in a second but you can't jump straight to it. You have to learn the basics of how do I develop my insulin to carb ratio? How do I identify my insulin to protein ratio? How is uh, my insulin to fat resistance ratio going to impact my other ratios? What about long acting insulin? You have to understand all these different timelines and variables and how they interact. But once you do, you reduce the overwhelm associated with them to a degree where you can finally start to live your life without diabetes getting in the way. And that's where cruise control comes into play. So if all you have is time, then observation, experimentation, and documentation are going to have to be your best friend, like trial and error, right? To where if you hopped in a car and just start pushing buttons, eventually you're gonna find first gear and the gas pedal. And you're gonna start going and you're gonna start clicking. And it's gonna, oh, it makes sense, right? I, I made progress. And it, it takes very long time. It can be dangerous. You might not know how to break in time before you drive off a cliff. So there are definitely pitfalls and dangers to watch out for and that are inherently part of that process. But if all you have is time, like if you have no money, no connections, no resources, no existing knowledge, you must learn through trial and error. That is the only possibility for you. It's the only path forward, right? But if you have a desire for expedited learning or best case scenario, learning from somebody else's trial and error or somebody else's mistakes, that's where you would go in and hire the driving instructor, right? So I had my uncle and my cousin teaching me how to drive and they taught me how to drive a stick shift. And that was furthered when my dad taught me how to drive my first car, which was also a stick shift. Also, I will always drive stick shift for the rest of my life. I love it. <laughs> I've had like six cars over the years. They, like, I've crashed and had to buy new ones and uh, they're all stick shift. It's my favorite thing. But that being said, I had a series of teachers. It wasn't even just one. And then on top of that, I hired a driving instructor when I went to get my license to learn the laws of the road, right? If you're somebody who desires faster and more customized outcomes and wants to reduce the risk of falling into those pitfalls or dangers that are also very much associated with diabetes, right? You make too many false moves, you might end up in the hospital, probably will. I certainly did. Uh, then that's where you go to hire the driving instructor, or in this case, a coach or a mentor or an expert who can shorten those feedback loops for you and give you direct feedback on what works, what doesn't, give you more nuanced advice and show you what the buttons mean and you know how to make these adjustments in real time before it gets to a place of being dangerous. So those are the two routes that I look at is one, if you have the time, then it's simply an appropriate amount of time and consistency that would make it unreasonable for you not to achieve your goals. If you think about it like this, if you obsessed about blood sugars and nothing else for the next two years, let's say, it would be unreasonable for you not to at least figure out how to survive, right? You would notice things. But like I said, you must observe and document like a madman or a mad woman. <laughs> you, that has to be your favorite thing in the world if you're going to actually learn from those series of trials and errors, right? So you have to identify what worked, what didn't, and adjust as necessary. Now, if you want the fast track to success, the second path 
is to hire that driving instructor or that mentor to come in and teach you everything and consolidate the information to where it might have taken them two, five, ten plus years to figure out the thing they're doing. Like for me with blood sugars, it took a long time, right? But if you hire an expert to come in, they consolidate all that information into a few days, weeks, or months and save you time as well. And with driving instructors, it's like two days, right? Instead of two years trying to figure out what all the buttons do and, and hoping you make it through alive. So when we look at this as a whole, diabetes overwhelm can be cured through a true understanding and true clarity of how blood sugars work. If I know exactly why they go up and why they go down and how to balance that out with every single situation that I encounter, well, then I'm not going to be overwhelmed anymore, right? I'm not gonna get frustrated unless it's something that I did to myself because if I know why it happened and I know how to fix it, especially if I know how to fix it before I get there, that is cruise control right with diabetes that's how you accomplish that but you have to get to a place where it is second nature where it is so uh, embedded in your mind that you know like a, a muscle reaction exactly what to do in different scenarios in order to keep it in range and the more it's in range the more peace of mind you get so as an outcome you have less overwhelm more peace of mind right but also more ability to enjoy life and feel more normal which is something that i was always after when i was first diagnosed all i wanted was to be able to live my life again as if i didn't have diabetes and i believe that i've come as close as i can to that where it's not on autopilot but it's on cruise control and if that's something you're looking for these are the two paths you can take one is time and consistency where it would be unreasonable for you not to accomplish your results but you must observe and document literally everything it's cold today and my blood sugars are higher write it down right it might not matter but it might so obsession in that degree or two is to learn from somebody else's mistakes hire the expert to come in and see what they can see from their lived experience and existing trial and error knowledge to then teach you the lessons without you having to go through it the hard way so uh, I hope this one was helpful for you. Uh, and I don't know if any of you felt the same way as I do, but when I know why something's going wrong, I'm at peace. <laughs> like, yeah, that makes sense, right? But for some odd reason, when it doesn't make sense, it fires me up. I get so frustrated. I'm like, why is this happening, right? Uh, so the certainty aspect certainly helps with my mental peace as well and my own interactions with others. So anyways, I hope you found this one helpful. And uh, of course, if you're looking for resources to learn on your own, we have literally hundreds of episodes on this podcast, on this YouTube channel, where you can go watch and learn from things that I've shared in the past. If you're looking for more customized help, there's a whole training we have for people who want to look into hiring an expert or a mentor. Uh, the first one, the whole training is free to give you an introduction to how we teach things differently. Uh, you think about driving instructors, there are the race car driving instructors, there's tractor driving instructors, there are motorcycle driving instructors. It has to be custom tailored to you. This training gives it into more of a customized path for you. So if you go to diabetesinaction.com, it'll show you the path that's more customized that'll allow you to see what that path looks like for you and uh, how you can start implementing blood sugar formulas into your life and get a bit closer to that cruise control goal that I know most of us are heading for. So diabetesinaction.com, go check out that free training. It, uh, it should help give you some clarity and some understanding on why blood sugars have been doing what they're doing and point you in the right direction. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Be sure to leave a comment. Let me know if you're also somebody who gets frustrated when it's unknown and blood sugar issues don't cooperate. I'll see you in the next episode. And have a great day and keep up the fight.